one. Do you ever want a flute, but you don't want to spend like a thousand dollars on one? Well, I'm going to show you how to make PVC pipe flutes, which is super, super easy and also so cheap. I'm also going to teach you a little bit about the physics behind flutes and why different notes happen when you plug different holes and all of that. So let's get started. When you blow into the embouchure hole of a flute, the airflow adds power, which vibrates the air in the flute according to the resonance frequency of the material. Those vibrations in the air are registered by your ears as sound waves. If all of the flute's finger holes are covered, the resonant frequency will be the note whose wavelength is equal to the distance between the embouchure hole and the end of the flute. Opening up the tone holes starting from the end of the flute will raise the pitch of the note being played because the sound waves are becoming shorter. The air is leaving the flute at the nearest tone hole, so the wavelength is now the distance from the embouchure hole to the nearest tone hole. Opening a hole that is separated from the end of the flute or other open tone holes by other close holes makes that open one act as a register hole which adds additional harmonic frequencies to the sound. These are typically holes that create frequencies whose wavelengths are even divisions of the fundamental note being played, as you can see in the image. In order to make a flute, all you need to know is where to place the holes depending on what notes you want the flute to be able to play. I used an online flute hole calculator that generated all the hole lengths depending on the size of the flute and the material used. I bought two different PVC pipes, one with a 3 quarter inch diameter and another with a half inch diameter to see how different they would sound. I started off with the 3 quarter inch pipe and the first thing I did was mark out all the places on the pipe where I needed to drill the embouchure and finger holes. All we had was a hand drill and a tape measure so we weren't able to get super precise. Then I clamped the pipe down and because drilling one quarter inch holes into the pipe was a little tricky, I made some smaller guiding holes first and then went back over them with a one quarter inch drill bit. After that, I just put a cap on the end of the pipe closer to the embouchure hole and the first flute was all done. For the second flute, the wall thickness was a tiny bit smaller, so technically each of the hole placements were different by a couple thousandths of an inch. But since we weren't drilling with that much precision in the first place, I just copied the hole placement from the first flute. Here's me playing each of the notes on the two flutes, first the thicker and then the thinner one. In theory, the wider diameter the flute has, the louder it should be able to play, but it's hard to hear that much of a difference between the two. I think because the difference in their diameters isn't really that big, but listen for yourself. As you can tell, the notes aren't tuned incredibly well because I had to eyeball the measurements and drill everything by hand, but you can totally hear the different notes and if you knew any songs for the flute, you might be able to play them. If you want to make your own and experiment with different flute dimensions, the flute hold calculator I used is in the description box along with a guide to making your own flute and also a very detailed page on flute acoustics. Thanks so much for watching.